Hi, I'm Ashin Lunny, welcoming you to the Siemens Advanta podcast, where we invite you to unlock the full potential of IoT. Every episode, we chat with some world leading experts who can help to make a vision of an optimistic IoT powered future a reality. And today, I am thrilled to be joined by two exceptional leaders who will be giving you an essential deep dive on leadership skills in an age of disruption. What are the challenges? What are the solutions? And what is the key advice you need to survive and thrive? Welcome to the podcast, Robert Neuhauser, Global Executive Vice President for People and Leadership from Siemens. Hi. And welcome to the podcast, Gerald Hassel, Vice President HR from Magna International. Hello. Thanks for having me. Excited to be here. Thank you both so much for joining us. Okay, there's an old saying, disrupt or be disrupted. And businesses today are being disrupted, not only by new players and new technologies, but also environmental factors. And we do seem to live in a world of vanishing predictability. So what does this all mean for our approach to leadership? You know, does this need to change as the times are changing? And what are your thoughts on how we need to make that happen? Starting with yourself, Robert. If I look at the longer term trends, in leadership that really changed the way how we lead. I always quote four different key trends in that. And the first one is indeed unpredictability. Yeah, Unpredictability is fundamental because many of the leadership principles of the past were based on a perfect leader can plan perfectly and then execute perfectly. And this does not work in a complex and unpredictable environment anymore. So there yeah. a lot of things break down. So that makes life very difficult. On the other hand, we get cool technologies, technologies that allow us as leaders now suddenly to address each individual of our people, ask them individually, provide learning individually to them, something we have dreamt of as leaders for decades. Then we have a third thing that is really important. We see a generation of managers coming into ranks that truly believe in science. And we have a lot of research about the behavior of people built up over the last decades. We know a lot, but we just need to take it serious. And this next generation of leaders coming into ranks now takes this serious. And this questions also fundamentally some of the thoughts that we had, how we lead people, how we train people, how we develop them. And the fourth big change, and this happens all the time, it's not specifically for our times, there's always this next generation of people coming into our companies, growing out of schools, universities, bringing new ideas and a completely new way of thinking that allows us to pilot. That are fundamental trends. Unpredictability, individualization or personalization technologies, data and science loving management generations, and the next generation coming in with new dreams. Mm, yeah, absolutely. It's certainly exciting times there. And, you know, you've really kind of outlined some of the mega trends there for the space and what leaders really need to be plugged into. Uh, but coming over to yourself, Gerald, I mean, what are your thoughts on that landscape and specifically some of the challenges that we have been facing over the past few years? What is the kind of mindset that we need to take into this new era? And what's your feedback on those four key points that Robert mentioned? So for a lot of people, it's really to get on board with accepting that the world is changing and that the answers which worked in the past are most likely not the answers we should try to apply to the questions <laughs> that we have to find answers nowadays. Yeah. I think what really on a high level, what was one of the biggest challenge I saw and what might be one of the fundamentals uh, going forward for leaders is if leaders do not have the appropriate trust level within their organization, mm. that people are trying hard to do a good job. I learned that if leaders have the right approach in terms of providing trust to their teams and their people, this is the basic for everything. So trust as a fundament of how to interact with your people. And then obviously, people have very different expectations in terms of how they want their leaders to support them in doing their job. And this yeah. is one of the biggest challenges. How can you facilitate your people to be successful? So it's clear that life is moving fast, but tech is moving even faster. And it's really crystal clear that leadership needs to evolve as well. So my question for you now, Robert, is, you know, 
with all this new tech and new stuff happening, are we going to need leaders in the future? And if so, is there a perfect leader that we should be looking for? Great question. Love it. <laughs> Thank you. So first, yes, we need leaders. Second question about what's the perfect leader for this environment? Yeah. There's a very interesting answer because the answer basically is there is none. Oh, there is none. <laughs> wow. And okay. the reason for this, and we need to be very outspoken on this, by the way. Yeah. And the reason for this is if you look in what tells science and the next generation of managers comes in and believe more in science. Yeah. We check for decades whether there are correlations of very specific leadership styles to the long-term success of a company. And the ugly truth is there is no correlation. So there is wow. not the perfect leadership profile. So from a scientific perspective, it's already wrong to look for this. Yeah. Secondly, in complex environments, we don't have the perfect profiles that fit to unpredictable environments. This is an oxymoron by itself. So actually, what we need to look for are leaders that are really proud of their specific profile and their strengths, mm. but are open enough to say, and here I have weaknesses that someone can compensate. So we talk much less about what's the perfect leader for this age, but we need to build highly diverse leadership teams to be able to sustainably and robustly uh, act in this environment. And this has indeed deep impact in how we think at Siemens about how we develop our leaders, because we come from a past where we had those leadership frameworks telling, look, this is exactly the profile that you need to be. And we ran our programs, our development programs in a sense of, look, here you have a gap. We need to train you on this gap to become the Siemens perfect leader. In the meantime, we completely scrap this. And our programs go about understand your strengths, be proud of your strengths, be extremely open about your weaknesses and be inviting for others to compensate for those. Yeah, That's a fundamental shift in our leadership development that we did over the last couple of years. And it's quite demanding for a couple <laughs> of us. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, you know, change is not always the most painless of experiences. But from what you were talking about there, it sounds a lot like a growth mindset is very valuable. And diversity is perhaps the most valuable thing of all to have that diverse set of viewpoints that enable you to see 360 around any problem and opportunity. And uh, Gerald, coming over to yourself, what was your own personal experience as a leader? You know, did you recognize the need for change? And how did you go about it? What inspired you? you i did work out of canada for a couple of years and this was really a tough assignment because the difference in the culture in terms of how they approach solving problems uh, is so significant that in the first phase i was somehow a little bit lost but what i learned from my north american colleagues is even the things are not perfect planned out if it's not every angle is thought through in every detail they just go to action much earlier than we would ever do this in a central europe logic in terms of how we scope out a project so for me the learning is there is not one truth to make things right you can do it in different ways and to be honest that's my greatest learning you know you can be successful in many different ways how you approach uh, a certain project topic challenge. Uh, and it doesn't uh, need to be scoped out and planned to the detail. The message here is, you know, there is not only one truth, how you can uh, innovate in an organization, how you can advance uh, technologies, how you can bring new products, new processes. There are different ways. And this is the luxury of a global company that you have people from very, very different uh, cultural backgrounds. And uh, the biggest success is to integrate and to interconnect all these different styles and types of managing projects. And that's the way we're being successful at the end. And what say you, Robert? One thing to add on what Carol said, there are many ways to achieve things and there's not the only perfect way. I think this is absolutely true. And there is something that supports basically the notion of what Gerard said about trying things faster and experimenting and being happy with the non-perfect solution to some extent. That's a major trend I think we see in the long run because it comes back to 
unpredictability. If it's true that things get less predictable, then there's a general truth that planning gets less powerful. And this is fundamental to our leadership approaches because we still need to plan the things where we have predictability, but more and more of our businesses get unplannable, unpredictable. And then fast experimentation and exploration becomes more important than plan. And speed of adaptation becomes more important than efficient execution of an outdated plan. Mm. So there are a couple of things also in terms of leadership practices where we see slight shifts, not radical, but shift from command and control to more and more iteration and explore, not because it's the fashion of the week, but it's just because the fundamental underlying problem has changed. So that's, I think, important and it fits nicely to what Gerald said. 100%. Yes, I love this idea of making a minimum viable product or a minimum lovable product and then iterating and really kind of moving, going with the flow and taking in those diverse viewpoints, the expertise and uh, really leveraging the excitement and the speed of the new techniques of product development and manufacturing. It's very, very exciting. And you know what they say, never let perfect get in the way of awesome. So, you know, obviously leadership does not exist in a vacuum. And both of you work for awesome companies, and it seems like you get the support that you need from your companies. Robert, talk to us a bit about how Siemens supports their leadership in this transformation. I think one of the key things is we need to change the way how we work and what is valuable. And the key thing about this is really building bridges. So one thing that we are very careful about at Siemens is not saying, look, now each and every one need to be agile because it's fun or cool <laughs> or the new culture. Yeah. But we spend a lot of time talking about, I don't even talk about agile. I don't talk about those things. I talk about, hey, our problem is changing. Mm. We don't need to be the perfect machine for a predictable world. Look, here, the unpredictability is there. What are solutions that help us on this? Because we have people that are very analytical. They absolutely understand if the problem is changing, their behavior is changing. Because if they don't have the buy-in analytically, intellectually, they won't follow anyhow. Mm. And then based on building this bridge, you can work on all those things. And how can I help them? How can I help them experiment? All those things. But for us, it's really important to build this bridge. You haven't done something wrong in the past. It was the perfect solution to the predictable environment. Now the problem has changed. Help us to find the new solution for this problem. And that's the basic idea behind many things we try to do. Oh, I like that. It sounds very inclusive and it's about leveraging the very best that people have to offer, but from a whole range of skill sets, viewpoints, diversities, etc. So that's just brilliant. I love that. And Gerald, coming over to yourself, how does Magna support their leadership in this time of transformation? What's the approach over there? What are the challenges in terms of the mindsets which are needed? And I'm happy that the times are gone where we were uh, looking at the big man, you know, the captain who either knows everything, has an answer for every problem that we need to have people with the intelligence of I can't know and I shouldn't know everything in detail, but I know how to inspire people. I know how to bring people back to the track. I know how to facilitate interaction and communication and socializing so that people still feel they are working in a company. They are working within a team and they have a great problem to solve or a great thing to execute. And this is equipping people with the skill set they need for accepting that they can't control everything, but they have a responsibility to develop their people so that they can control their work themselves, that they are confident, that they speak up whenever they need support. This is more a mindset change which needs to take place. Mm, indeed. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and Robert, coming over to yourself, you know, we've just been hearing from Gerald a few skills that are needed, some particular strengths that companies can help their leadership teams embrace the mindset that you mentioned earlier. A bit of a big question for you now, but how can leaders succeed 
in this world of change and uncertainty? What advice would you give them? Sometimes when getting asked the same question by some of our talents, I just say, survive. <laughs> yes. Then that has some remarkable truth to it. Uh, yeah. Because if you want to survive in a complex environment with permanently changing requirements, with permanently changing situations, yeah. being stable, being resilient, surviving in this environment, providing stability by surviving is an important factor in this. So while we were talking in the past sometimes about personal resilience, well-being, keep yourself healthy as kind of, yeah, yeah, the fluffy blast off of HR. <laughs> In those environments, they are becoming really business critical yeah. because as a leader, if I don't survive, if I'm not stable, if I'm not fitting to myself, mm. no way that I can be an anchor in this unpredictable environment. So things that we used to think of as soft stuff suddenly become pretty important factors for hardcore business success. And that's cool, by the way, at the very moment when you are in HR. Yeah, 100%. I would agree wholeheartedly with those kind of recommendations. You know, it's as we say again and again on the podcast, it is all about the people. And as time moves quickly, it's about those bridges that people build with each other. It's about companies facilitating their leaders to be excellent and to bring the best out of all of their teams on a diverse and collaborative basis. So those are words to live by. I absolutely love that. That was a big question, but I really like the answer. And I'll throw this next question open to both of you. How do leaders need to reimagine their approaches in today's complex world. So things like people to data, to their technology architecture, to their partner ecosystems, a lot is changing. How would you recommend that leaders approach all these different factors they have to work with? There is one big belief on my side, what I would also give as an advice to leaders, really pick the right people mm -hmm. and pick people who are thinking different than you are. And allow them to challenge your way you see things and you are used to resolve things. And it's not something which is making you weaker as a leader, but it makes you much stronger. Because what is true for you and what's the truth you would fight for that this is your experience you have done this so often allow people to challenge it because there is a, a chance that things are working differently if you allow to uh, think it differently and that other solutions may suit much better to the problem than what you did 15 20 years before i would fully agree what gerald said fully agree Building on that, it is a little bit about being really curious, really curious, curious to learn new things, curious to learn what other people think, because this allows you to integrate many of those things. And those thoughts are far more interesting than your own. But then there comes also a second thing. And sometimes I share this when also talking to our talents, be curious, listen, but then at some point, be really logical, be mm. radical about the things, because when you have listened, some of those disruptions are so strong that you really see if this is not true. Third thing that I keep on telling them is, but be patient. Yeah. Because you're acting with people, not with machines. People need time. So be logical, be radical, be patient. Specifically when talking to talents in early phases of their career, the last thing is stay human. Because finally, all the logic, all the radical, all the patient does not work if people don't believe that you are a human and they are allowed to be humans too. So that is, I think, in this environment, building on what Gerald said, be curious first, invite the people, and then those four things kicking. I love it. They are some words to live by right there, 100%. Now, one final question, and uh, it's a nice one. So if you had one thing that you could give leaders on their way for their transformation, what would it be? If I would frame it as an advice, it would be know your strengths and be mm. incredibly proud of them. And know your weaknesses and be incredibly inviting to others to compensate <laughs> for them. That's superb, superb advice. And what say you, Gerald? 
Yeah, I think it is uh, the curiosity and the mindset of uh, being open to the fact that the world is different than you think it is. Sage advice there. And I suspect our busy listeners and leaders appreciate that concise download of insights to power up their approach to leadership in an age of disruption. It's all about digitization, individualization, diversity, building bridges and being adaptable and curious and logical and radical and courageous and stable and resilient and patient and human. But remember, value eats culture, eats strategy for breakfast. So thank you so much to our two brilliant guests for leading us through this leadership master. Masterclass. Robert Neuhauser. Thanks for having us. And Gerald Harzel. Thank you. Very inspiring dialogue with you guys. Listeners, thanks to you for joining us for this fascinating discussion. If you enjoyed the podcast, please don't forget to tell your friends, share with your colleagues, and leave a nice review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. And if you haven't already, feel free to subscribe to the Siemens Advanta podcasts wherever you get your favorite podcasts. See you next time.